Um, we've heard we've heard uh, a number of people reference the action plan today. So I, I want to go to Ms. Exner Perot and just quickly ask the following question. My understanding of the bill as it is now um, requires an action plan as did Bill C-262, but the bill does not require the action plan to include any targets and or deliverables. Um, Professor Gunn in her comments early referenced a lost three years on the action plan since 2018. And she also talked about, you know, that's the time and place to sort out many of the issues. Um, it, to me, it looks like maybe New Zealand has figured this out where they're doing the heavy lifting and putting their action plan in place before they implement the legislation. And so my question to Ms. Exner Pro is, could you maybe explain from your organization's perspective what the value of putting the action plan before the legislation might be in addressing some of the uncertainty that you you talked about um, in your investors? Yeah, so not not just investors, but also, you know, other Indigenous organizations interested in resource development don't want that uncertainty. And uh, I, I, you know, in the general consensus from the people that we've been able to talk to is that the action plan would be, you know, a great vehicle. We have lots of ideas on things, you know, concrete that can make it easier for Indigenous people to attract capital, uh, you know, putting the eye into ESG standards, procurement, things like that. So, and I know our partners do too. So the more that I think the legislation makes clear that the action plan will fully articulate, you know, that they kind of, there's a status quo until the action plan is, is agreed to, I think the better, you know, then you can have the consultation. I know there's lots of concern that there hasn't been enough time that the, this feels rushed. And I think if there's an understanding that the action plan is, is the place where we can decide what's going to be different, you know, uh, what's going to change, what's going to be the practical implications of C-15. That would uh, take care of a lot of people's concerns, and I'm, I'm sure if you if you speak to other people in industry or pension plans, they might say the same thing. But certainly from the perspective of our indigenous organizations we're working with, uh, they have lots of ideas in the action plan and, and prefer to see that the vehicle. One minute, go ahead. Thank you. I'll be really quick, uh, Professor Gunn. Maybe just would you comment as well? You made the early the reference to having lost three years. Whether in, in all of this process, whether there have been anything preventing the government from starting the action plan so that by the time we got to this point, three years down the road, the, the legislation would, would have a lot more certainty and clarity. Thanks. Um, you know, I think practically, I mean, you're in a better position to know how government works than perhaps I am. And there was nothing, but there was, of course, challenges that we see. We had all put in a lot of time and effort into Bill C-262 and it had made it through the House and it had made it through many steps of uh, the Senate as well. So I think we had all anticipated it successfully entering into law and we all had to shift gears when it was quickly died in the Senate. And so I think reformulating an approach after that happened took time. But I think importantly, the reason why we can't just do an action plan first is that the UN declaration under rules in Canadian law does have relevance already and is being used by the courts. And I think we want to, as much as possible, to have a coordinated approach. And while it's important for the UN Declaration to be able to be used in litigation where necessary, we don't want to rely on that. So I think I would flip the question to say, if we don't move and clarify this recognition of the application in, UN, in Canadian law, we're leaving it to the courts to have that interpretation. And it leads to more uncertainties and irregularities, for example, between the provincial courts and sometimes what we're seeing in the 